Okay, chapter 7, Paris to Berlin, year 1885-1887. After completing his studies in Madrid, Vizal went to Paris in Germany in order to specialize in ophthalmology. He particularly chose this branch of medicine because he wanted to cure his mother's eye ailment. He also served as an assistant to the famous Oculus of Europe. In Berlin, capital of then unified Germany, he met and befriended several top German scientists, Dr. Fyodor Hagor, Dr. Adolf B. Mayer, Dr. Hans Mayer, and Rudolf, Rudolf Virchow, or Virchow. His merits as a scientist were recognized by the eminent scientists of Europe. Shortly after terminating his studies at the Central University of Madrid, Rizal, who was then 24 years old and already a physician, went to Paris in order to acquire more knowledge in ophthalmology. So at the age of 24 years old, he already a physician. And kahit na isang isang physician, uh, gusto pa rin niyang pumunta ng Paris para magkaroon pa ng dagdag na kaalaman at uh, Kasanayan pagdating sa ophthalmology. On his way to Paris, he stopped at Barcelona to visit his friend Maximo Viola or Viola. Maximo is a medical student and a member of a rich family of San Miguel Bulacan. So Dr. Jose Rizal stayed for a week during which time he befriended Senor Eusebio Corominas, editor of the newspaper La Publicidad and made a crayon sketch of Don Miguel Moraita on honor of La Publicidad. In November 1885, he was living in Paris on November 1885. So Dr. Louis de Wecker is a leading French ophthalmologist where Rizal worked as an assistant about four months. January 1, 1886, Rizal wrote a letter for his mother to reveal that he was rapidly improved his knowledge in ophthalmology. So outside of his working hours at Dr. Worker's clinic, Rizal relaxed by visiting his friends such as the family of the Pardo de Taveras, including Trinidad, Felix, and Paz, Juan Luna, and Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. Paz, Pardo de Tavera, was a pretty girl who was engaged to Juan Luna. At the studio of Luna, Rizal spent many happy hours who dis he discussed with Luna, the great master of the brush, various problems on art and improved his own painting technique. He helped Luna by posing as a model in several paintings such as The Death of Cleopatra, where Rizal posed as an Egyptian priest, and then The Blood Compact, Rizal posed as Picatuna, with Trinidad Padre de Tavera taking the role of the Gaspi. So, Rizal as musician. Ano nga ba si Dr. Jose Rizal bilang uh, musician? So, Rizal had no natural aptitude for music and this he admitted. He studied music only because many of his schoolmates at Ateneo were taking music lessons. So, hindi po ganun kagalingan si Dr. Jose Rizal pagdating sa music. Although, kilala natin siya bilang uh, magaling sa lahat ng larangan. But pagdating sa music ay uh, hindi siya ganong uh, sanay. So nag-aral siya ng lesson ng music kasi gusto din niya namang makisabay sa mga kaklase niya that time. In a letter dated November 27, 1878, he told Enrique Lete that he learned the solfeggio, piano, and voice culture in one month and a half. And doon sa letter na isinulit ni Dr. Rosarizal kay letter, he said that, You would wish you were in Spain because my voice is like the braying of the asses. So, yun. So, sinabi doon ni Dr. na mas gugustuhin na lang ni Enrique na pumunta ng Spain kaysa sa marinig pa yung kanyang boses. So, ganun niya um, iniisip na ganun kasama yung kanyang boses. 
So dahil sa kanyang determination at constant practice, Rizal became a flutist in various impromptu reunions of Filipinos in Paris. So some of his compositions are Alin Mang Lahi or Any Race, a patriotic song which asserts that any race aspires for freedom. And then the La Deportation or Deportation is a sad dance composed in the Pitan during his exile. So after acquiring enough experience as an ophthalmologist in Dr. Worker's clinic, Rizal reluctantly left Gay Paris on February 1, 1886. And then February 3, 1886, he arrived in Heidelberg, a historic city in Germany, famous for its old university and romantic surroundings. For a short time, he lived in a boarding house with some German law students. These students found out that Rizal was a good chess player so that they made him a member of the Chess Players Club. So he became popular among the German students. And then Rizal is also a good chess player. So uh, after a few days, si Rizal ay uh, nag-transfer sa boarding house uh, na malapit sa University ng Heidelberg. At doon, tuwing weekend, si Dr. Rosarizal ay bumibisita sa mga scenic spots around Heidelberg. Isa na doon yung famous Heidelberg Castle, the Romantic Necker River, the theater, and the old churches. And isa sa, sa Necker River ay natagpuan ni Dr. Rosarizal lang naging paborito niyang bulaklak. Yun, doon, doon ay mayroong nakabighan ni kay Dr. Rosarizal. At yun yung uh, forget me not. So, ito ay isang bulaklak na color light blue. So, April 22, 1886, he write a fine poem, A Las Flores de Heidelberg, or to the, flower, to the Flowers of Heidelberg. So, sa sobrang pagkapigyan ni, ni, ni Dr. Jose Rizaldo sa bulaklak, ay ginawa niya ito ng isang tula. So, Wilhelmsfeld, where Rizal spent a three-month summer vacation. So, ang Wilhelmsfeld ay isang uh, lugar. It is a mountainous village near Heidelberg. He stayed at the vicarage of a kind Protestant pastor, Dr. Karl Ulmer, who became his good friend and admirer. So, his pleasant personality and talents in languages and sketching endured him to the pastor's wife, who was a good cook and two children, Eta and Fritz. So, doon, nakilala niya si protestant pastor Dr. Card Ulmer, and doon siya nag-stay. And then, May 29, 1887, si Dr. Jose Rizal ay sumulat from Munich or Munchen to Friedrich. So, si Friedrich or Fritz ay anak ni anak na lalaki ni Dr. Carl Ulmer. And doon sa sulat ay binigay niya ay pinahayag ni Dr. Sarisal kung gaano niya hinangaan ang kabaitan na mayroon ang pastor. July 30, 1886, Rizal wrote his first letter in German to Professor Ferdinand Blumentritt. Si Professor Blum Ferdinand Blumentritt is a director of the Ateneo of Late Merits, Austria. He had heard of this Austrian ethnologist and his interest in Philippine languages. So with the letter, Rizal sent the book which he mentioned. The book was entitled Arithmetic or Arithmetic and was published in two languages, which is Spanish and Tagalog by the University of Santo Tomas Press in 1868. So, Rizal's letter from Heidelberg impressed Blumentritt, who reciprocated by sending Rizal a gift of two books. It marked the beginning of their long and frequent correspondence, also of their friendship that lasts all their lives. Blumentritt, the Austrian, became the best friend of Rizal, the Filipino. So, naging mag best friend si uh, Ferdinand Blumentritt and Dr. Rosarizal. 
Rizal was fortunate to be sojourning in Heidelberg when the famous University of Heidelberg held its fifth centenary celebration on August 6, 1886. It was three days before his departure and he was sad because he had come to love the beautiful city and its hospitable people. So the following entry on his diary date August 6, 1886 and he described the celebration of the fifth centenary of the famous University of Heidelberg. August 9, 1886, three days after the fifth centenary celebration of the University of Heidelberg, Rizal left the city. He boarded a train, visited various cities of Germany, and arrived in Leipzig on August 14, 1886. In Leipzig, Rizal translated Schiller's William Tell from German into Tagalog so that Filipinos might know the story of the champion of Swiss independence. Later, he also translated into Tagalog for his nephews and nieces, Hans Christian Andersson's fairy tales. Rizal also found out that the cost of living in Leipzig was cheapest in Europe so that he stayed two months and a half in this German city. He corrected some chapters of his second novel and performed his daily physical exercises at the city gymnasium. Because of his knowledge of German, Spanish, and other European languages, he worked as a proofreader in a publisher's firm, thereby earning some money. October 29, he left Leipzig for Dresden, where he met Dr. Adolf B. Mayer. It is a director of the Anthropological and Ethnological Museum. He stayed two days in the city. In the morning of November 1, Rizal left Dresden by train, reaching Berlin in the evening. Rizal was enchanted by Berlin because of its scientific atmosphere and the absence of race prejudice or prejudice. In this city, he, be he came in contact with great scientists. So he met for the first time Dr. Fyodor Hagor, which is an author of Travels in the Philippines. See, Dr. Fyodor Hagor then is a German scientist traveler. See, Dr. Hans Virchow, a professor of descriptive anatomy. Dr. Rudolf Virchow is a German anthropologist. Dr. Joe West, noted as German geographer. Dr. Karl Ernest Queger a famous German ophthalmologist, where Jose worked in his clinic. Rizal became a member of the Anthropological Society, Ethnological Society, and Geographical Society of Berlin. So Rizal's life in Berlin. Five reasons why Rizal lived in Germany. First is to gain further knowledge of ophthalmology. Second, further his studies of sciences and languages. Three, third, observe the economic and political conditions of the German nation. Fourth, is associated with famous German scientists and scholars. And the last is to publish his novel, which is Noli Mitangere. In addition, sa results life in Berlin, Si Dr. Jose Rizal then is, uh, he worked as an assistant in the clinic of Dr. Squager, eminent German ophthalmologist, but at night, he attend lectures in the University of Berlin, the so same as with the students of academy colleges. So they work at, in, uh, sa araw ay nagtatrabaho sila, and then sa gabi is nag-aaral. So, si Madame Lucy Sardole ay isang French professor. She became Jose's professor in Berlin. He took private lessons in French in, od in order to master the idiomatic intricacies of the French language. So, nag-aral nag si Dr. Jose Rizal to master French so that he may be able to write it as well as in Spanish. March 11, 1886, 
Rizal wrote a letter addressed to his sister Trinidad expressing his high regard and admiration to German woman the German woman and the Spanish woman. So there's a comparison between them. German woman is a serious, diligent, educated, and friendly, while the Spanish woman gossipy, frivolous, and quarrelsome. So Dr. Jose Rizal admired the German woman. In addition, Rizal regret that in the Philippines, the women are more interested in how they dress than in how much they know. He prays, however, the delicacy of feeling, the, fi the fine manners, devotion, and hospitality of the Filipino women, especially those in the provinces who are not yet sophisticated. If only they can cultivate their intellect by education and by taking more interest in worthy affairs, remark Rizal, they can command the respect of all men. So accordingly, Rizal advises his sister, Trinidad, now that you are still young, you should strive to read, read, and learn. You must not allow yourself to be conquered by indolence because it costs so little to cast it off. So, nabanggit ni Dr. Sarisal na ang mga Pilipina ay uh, mas binibigyan pa sila kanilang uh, pananamit instead of learning or kaalaman. But then, he prays also the delicacy of feeling or yung mga katangian ng mga Pilipina. So, the women of Jose Rizal. So, sila yung mga uh, kababaihan na naging bahagi ng buhay ni Dr. Jose Rizal. So, meron dito sham na kababaihan. So, aside from the German women, Rizal also admired the German customs, which he observed well. It must be noted that he was a keen observer of the customs of the peoples in all the countries he visited. So the Christmas custom of the Germans delighted him most. Another interesting German custom observed by Rizal is soft introduction to strangers in a social gathering. According to the German Code of Etiquette, it is a bad manner for the guest to remain aloof and wait for his host or hostess to make the proper introduction. So. When a man attends a social function and finds that there is nobody to introduce him to the other guest, he bows his head to the guest, introduces himself, and shakes the hands of everyone in the room. So it is a bad for them if you remain aloof and hindi ka nakikisalamuha. So, code of etiquette nila yun.